They were a powerful elite force, of the Roman world power. Their men were the best equipped, and best paid soldiers, in the entire Roman army. The Praetorians. They were the strongest of all Roman legionaries. The Praetorian Guard, was stationed in Rome. As the power of Rome grew, so did political assassination and intrigue. The Praetorians were often, right in the middle of these affairs. The Praetorians had the power to decide the life and death of the Emperor, and had gained more power than the Emperor himself. As a secret state in the Roman Empire, the Praetorians could replace the Emperor, if his goals and interests do not align with theirs. The Praetorians were paid three to five times higher, that of a normal Roman legionnaire. These elite guards, were drawn recruited from the ranks of all the legions of the Roman Empire. Only the best, and strongest legionnaires were accepted into this guard. In this video, I show you the five most terrifying facts about the Praetorian Guard. Here we go. Fact 1. The Emperor's Private Bodyguards. The term Praetorian, has its origin in the command center of a legionary camp, better from the general's tent, the Praetorium. Many Roman generals, also called legates, took it upon themselves, to select a private special force from among the ranks of the legion, who acted as bodyguards for the tent, or for themselves. Later, this special force was called Cohors Praetoria. Many famous Roman generals recruited such a military unit, such as Gaius Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, and Augustus. When Oavian Augustus in 27 BC became ruler of the Roman Empire, he decided that such a formation could be useful not only in war, but also in politics. For this reason, he recruited from the ranks of the legions of all provinces, the Praetorian Guard. This was its birth. The Praetorians, were mainly stationed in Rome. The Castra Praetoria, were proposed by the Praetorian Prefect Sienus between 20 and 23 AD, and built by Roman Emperor Tiberius. This brought together the Praetorians, who had been spread across several locations by Octavian Augustus, in one location. The Castra Praetoria stood completely contrary, to the Roman tradition, of a military free capital. For the first time, the deployment of troops in the city was now publicly visible. The Castra Praetoria, was on one of Rome's highest mountains northeast of the city, near the Pomerium. This fortress stood until the dissolution of the Praetorian Guard under Constantine in 312 AD. The Castra Praetoria is still in Rome today, and a subway station was named after it. Fact 2. The Suppression of Armed Uprising. Opinion about the Praetorians among contemporary historians is now divided. For some, the Praetorians were the symbol of the power, and glory of the Roman Empire. For the others, these troops had the purpose of suppressing rebellions, against the Emperor. But there was never a black and white division. While the Roman legions, on the Empire's frontiers expanded the Empire, the Praetorians were active inside the Empire. So these were the Emperor's bodyguards, the police, controlled the crowds at signs of riots and disturbances. Another important function the Praetorians, was that in the case when a single general, was at the front wanting to become emperor, and marching on the city of Rome, he was destroyed by the Praetorian guard, before he reached city of Rome with his legions. The Praetorians, were soldiers ready for any cruel deed. The troop strength of the Praetorians was nine cohorts, of one thousand men each. That means, a total strength of 9,000 men. In the later imperial period, became the strength, the Praetorians increased to 17,000 men. Three cohorts were stationed in the Castra Praetoria, and the other six around the city of Rome. Fact 3. Selection, Training and Equipment. The training of the Praetorians was, when they were not on guard or traveled with the Emperor, more intensely, than in the normal legions. Although, the guard at least, have the same standards as a normal legion. 
That means, daily hand-to-hand -hand combat training, 30 kilometers marches with all weapons and equipment. Many legionnaires wanted to join the Praetorian Guard, because of the triple pay and prestige. Many legionaries waited in front of the recruitment sites. In some cases, political connections turned an ordinary legionnaire into a Praetorian. The equipment of the Praetorian Guard, was also like that of the regular legion. The sword Gladius, and the javelin Pilum. However, the shield Scutum had an oval instead of a square shape, but the Praetorians had a decorative helm with a long crest. Consequently, the Praetorians possessed two uniforms, one for service in Rome, and one for a campaign on Rome's borders. The length of service in the guard was 16 years, instead of 20 for the normal legionnaires. The Praetorians were much better fed, their barracks were lavishly and luxuriously furnished, than that of the normal legions. The color of the legion's tunic was red. The Praetorian Guard, was the only military unit, entitled to wear the color purple. In the Roman Empire, the color purple, was the color of the emperor. The ordinary legionnaire could only dream of this uniform. These guards were first used as combat troops, in the first year of the four emperors, 69 AD. They fought at the Battle of Bedriacum, for the Roman general Otho against another Roman general. After the death of Emperor Nero around the Emperor Tron in 69 AD, under the Emperor's Domitian and Trajan, the Praetorians took part in the wars from Dacia to Mesopotamia, while spending years on the Danube front, under Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Fact 4. Much Higher Salary The Praetorians received much higher pay, than other Roman soldiers. They were paid under a system, called the sesquiplex stipendum, which means one and a half times higher pay. If an ordinary legionnaire received 225 denarii, as an annual salary, the Praetorians received 375 denarii. The payment of the elite guard was dependent on the respective emperors. The first emperor Augustus, paid 150 denarii to the annual legionary salary, and 375 denarii to the Praetorians. Emperor Claudius raised this to the annual salary of the legionnaires got to 225 denarii, and the Praetorians then already received 750 denarii annual salary. Emperor Commodus to 375 denarii for a legionary, and for the Praetorian 1125 denarii per year. But, what was the special incentive to join the guard? The incentive, was the donative. When the emperor changed office, the guard received it from the new emperor, a donative. A so-called bonus payment. Converted our record heights of the equivalent, of 3,500 US dollar, created per man. When a Praetorian retired, he received 5,000 denarii, a gift of land, and an award inscribed to the soldier who bravely and faithfully served his country. Fact 5. The Emperor Murderers. Within a few years of its founding, the guard is too structured, as only modern secret services can. Even as spies, the Praetorians, knew everything that happened in Rome, and nothing was hidden from them. They knew all the dark secrets of every political and military teammate. Thus the Praetorians, were used to silently eliminate the Emperor's political opponents. However, as their pay increased, the Praetorians became more and more powerful, and killed the Emperor himself if they wanted to. The first emperor to be assassinated by the Praetorian Guard, was Caligula in 41 AD. Here the Praetorians were in one conspiracy against the Emperor. In 69 AD, Emperor Galba was assassinated by the previously purchased Praetorians. In 192 AD, the Praetorians were implicated in the conspiracy, and subsequent assassination of Emperor Commodus. Just one year later, the next emperor, was stabbed by the guard after three months in office. There is evidence, that eight emperors were murdered by the Praetorian Guard. The end of the Praetorians, came only after 300 years of shadow rule. At the end of their existence, the Praetorians miscalculate in their entries, and are resolved by Emperor Constantine the Great in 312 AD. I hope you enjoyed the video, if so please leave a subscription, and thumbs up. See you soon, your channel history best.